everybody out there, thank you so much for joining us. Um, I'm Garrett Sanchez, and I'm one of the pastors here, the Young Adults Pastor at True Hope Church, and I've got Bruce Young with me, uh, our fearless leader. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about just what's been, where we've come through 2020, and kind of what we're looking at going forward. And so, I uh, just want to check in, Bruce, you know, how have things been happening around the church with in-person services? Well, as you know, we went about nine weeks without in-person services. So when we first came back, it was like a breath of fresh air, real people in the room and um, and in the lobby. And, and it's been really great. And we've, um, we've tried to be as safe as possible, and I think we've been pretty successful at that. Um, but man, it's great. And, and uh, slowly, people are getting more and more comfortable. Um, and some folks go to the balcony, which was our super safe place, and and then they 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 um, you know leave without a lot of contact. Which so so I like that we have the balcony, uh, but we we've, we've spaced out our distance ourselves, and people wear masks, and um, uh, for the most part. And so we're uh, I'm feeling really good uh, okay. about it actually. Good. It's a little bit better than preaching to a live audience. Better oh, than man. it was to the camera. <laughs> Yeah, it's, folks, it's tough to talk to a camera and you're the only one in the room, so, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And have we seen any cases of COVID, like, occurring here at True Hope? No, not that I know of. A mm -hmm. uh, lot of our people have, have contracted COVID in various ways. I just talked to a person today that, that uh, has recovered, and because um, I was pretty concerned about him. And, um, but no, we've been very fortunate, and... Um, Hopefully it's because we've been taking precautions with the hand sanitizer and the distancing and the masks and people have been pretty safe. And if they don't feel safe, they can always, you know, self-select, mm -hmm. uh, which they should do. And, and of course, some of you are at home and you should be at home and we miss you. And I'm sure that you miss being with everybody and with friends and, uh, and the fellowship together. But, uh, but the Lord has a plan and, and you know, this will be over one day. Yeah, and I'm really thankful to be a part of a church that we really are trying to do both. We're, we're offering these safe in-person gatherings, yeah. which have been great, like you said. Um, so nice to be able to have that, while also bolstering our online and, and having the live streaming options. So, um, yeah, we're happy for wherever your decision is. You know, Thank you for joining us um, on Sundays. Um, I do want to remind you, actually, that we are having a new registration link. So if you are interested in joining us for in-person services this weekend, please be sure to check out the uh, September Eventbrite registration uh, and, and let us know that you're going to be here. It just helps us to be able to prepare a little bit yeah. and kind of know how we can space people out and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I mean, really, let me just tag on to that because we look at the Eventbrite. We look at um, how many are coming, who's coming, and so we try to prepare for that number of people, and um, so so it does help us. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so what do you see just in, in through this whole season, what is happening to the church in America at large, and what do you see spiritually happening at our church on the local level? Well, nationally, just lots of podcasts and um, the communication links that I'm connected with, pastors and people <clears throat> and denominations and so on, uh, very, very generally, um, the entire Christian community that used to go to church somewhere in America, whatever the church, it's basically since COVID and up till now about uh, that, that is broken into thirds. One third has disappeared. Uh, don't, don't even know if they're having, if they're checking in at all. Another third are watching their service in their church and whatever's going on, whatever that stream is. About a third of the people are watching online. And then about a third are showing up for in-person services of those churches that have in-person services at all. So um, we, True Hope, are both at Collister and downtown, are ahead of that curve in terms of in-person. We have about 40% of our congregation that is um, coming in-person on a Sunday. And we have a good online presence as well. And we have a, a number of people who um, we don't know what happened to them. So, you know, it's pretty average. Yeah, yeah. We, I think, we, like you said, we see that happening across the board, and we can praise God for what He is doing yep. uh, And as far as our in-person and online goes. And that's been pretty let consistent. Me, let me say this. I, I know you didn't ask me to say this, but uh, for True Hope Church at Collister and downtown, I have to say you all are amazing when it comes to giving. Really, honestly, mm -hmm. people are 
have, have had to give differently. There's not an offering pay, plate that's passed, even in the in-person services. And uh, those of you that are online are mailing it in or doing it online. And so our giving has stayed stre- steady and strong. And um, that's not true for many, many churches. So mm-hmm. I just want to say thank you. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and the ministry is moving forward, and we'll share a little bit about it here yeah. now. Yeah, well, I was going to ask, that's, that's a great uh, leading point into that. A lot of churches are having to say, oh, how do we tighten the belt buckle and really strap down and kind of lo- lose sight of maybe some of the vision or things that they had planned? Um, and one of the values that we've had here is a multiplying community. And, uh, and so t- talk to me a little bit about that. Like, are we still moving in that direction? Or are we saying, no, we got to hold on tight to what we have because, you know, it's fleeting and have this kind of fear mentality? Or just talk to me a little bit about where we're at with that. Well, our approach to resources is, hasn't changed in COVID, right? If we, if we have resources, we want to turn them into ministry. We don't, we don't try to save them or hoard them or say, well, the, the sky is going to fall we want to be uh, uh, prudent. We want to be wise. We want to have a rainy day fund uh, as a church, but we're not pulling back in terms of that. And, and you've made that possible, like I just said, with the giving. We haven't had to let any staff go or even reduce their hours. So that's been a tremendous luxury. Um, we've asked ourselves, how can what's happened with the COVID Um, for our church and for other churches. Um, How can this, quote, pruning help us? How can we refine and better define um, what we should be about as a church? What are the core things that that, uh, we can still do and we still should be doing, and perhaps even that we're not? For example, uh, we all know that the church should be about making disciples. It's the Great Commission, go make disciples. And so we've been asking quite a bit, what, what is our disciple-making process, and uh, how can we tweak that or rebuild it? And so we've got, we just this week had uh, a meeting on that, and we're going to be rolling out some things in January on, uh, on disciple-making. So, so that's one thing. On the subject of multiplying, also we've, we've been for about a year in talks, if you will, discussions um, about another campus. You go, why another campus? It's hard work. People leave. We lose leaders. Because that's part of making disciples. Um, it's, it's, it's a sacrifice. Mm. And we're not on this earth just to, to get the most enjoyment until we die. We're here to make disciples and to see God use us. And part of that is reproduction. So we've been talking about it, and we're actually getting fairly close. We can't roll it out yet. But um, there's a church near us, like Collister, a couple years ago, who's come to us and said, man, we, we, uh, these aren't quite the words. We're in trouble. And so we've been talking about how, um, how to help that church, how to have a gospel presence in that church, uh, part of town, and uh, I'm I'm really excited about it. I, I want to tell you everything, but I can't <laughs> at this point. Um, but but it, that will happen soon. Yeah. So I think just bringing it down to the individual level, then, what is your hope for um, you know our people specifically for their discipleship in this process as we look to multiplying disciples, multiplying campuses? What is the individual hope that you have for each uh, each member that might be watching? Let me answer that. It's not exactly on target with what you asked, but, but, I, but it's definitely what's on my mind right now. I believe that this COVID thing is going to be around for a year or two years more. This idea that we're going to get a vaccine and return to normal in three months is, is false. And so we have to, and I'm, I'm asking you to think through, if this is, if this is going to last another year or two, what needs to change in my life? As we have asked here at church uh, on location, I, I want you to ask, am I really going to skate along for two years with my spiritual life and my engagement with church and ask yourself, what, what kinds of things can I do uh, to utilize this time? It's absolutely different. Now, if you're a parent, you're probably pulling your hair out. And this is not good news. 
that life is going to be like this for a while. I mean, you're I can parent. speak to that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, um, but I think we need to grab our bootstraps and say, what do I need to do if this is going to be life for for the foreseeable future? Yeah. And how can I um, grow mm-hmm. my relationship with God personally? How can I grow in community with the restraints we have? Mm-hmm. Um, and so th- those are important questions. So, yeah. yeah, even for me being you know on staff here and valuing church, but just at the same time recognizing, just like you said, all the struggles we're going through and just the emotions I've had to process through and go like, okay, if this is my new normal though, and if it's you know if it's what God is calling me to go through in my life right now, then I need to just accept it and be like, okay, what does He want me to do in the middle of this, you know, and and not let those circumstances define us. So yeah, thank you guys so much for you know listening to to everything we're thinking about and and talking through um, here on staff. So. Uh, Thanks, Bruce, for for sharing your heart. Uh, And yeah, we'll hope to see you guys this Sunday. So again, make sure to register and uh, we'll see you then. Or or online. Or online. That's right. Yes, we'll see you online or in person. So (laughs) God bless. God bless.